All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem. So we want to find the number of ones in the binary representation of a number. So for example, if we consider the number two, the number of ones in its binary representation is one. And that's because we can represent two in binary by one zero. So another example is if we consider the integer five, then the number of ones in its binary representation is two. That's because the binary representation of the uh, integer five is one zero one. And again, similarly for the number 11, there's three ones in this uh, binary representation because it can be represented as one zero one one. So I'm going to present two different ways that you can solve this problem. Uh, one is going to make use of Python's internal bin function, which converts uh, any number to its binary representation. And then we'll solve the problem using uh, without that binary function. Perhaps uh, if you see this problem in an interview, if you solve it with the binary representation function, the bin function, uh, then the interviewer may want you to solve it without access to that function for whatever reason. So let's first solve the problem with that function. So I'll say approach one using Python's bin function. Okay, so what is going on here? So if you're not familiar, Python's bin function gives you the binary representation of a number. So let's actually just do an example. Let's give an example of the number five. If I print out bin of num, which in this case is five, this will give me the binary representation of five, which as we know is one zero one. Now, the way Python do, does this is it formats any binary string with these two characters in the front, this zero and B to denote that it's a binary string. The actual uh, elements of the string that we care about are the components that follow zero and B. So essentially we can just lop off these first two characters anytime we call the bin function and use that to uh, determine how many ones are in that representation of the number. So let's actually do that. I think the approach is pretty straightforward. Let's define a variable called one sum, which we'll initially set to zero. This will keep track of the number of ones that we've encountered in the uh, binary representation of the number. Let's have a variable called bin rep. This will be equal to the uh, binary representation of the number where we lop off the first two uh, components of that thing. So this zero and B is now uh, not going to be there. And so then that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to loop through the binary representation. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep a running total, a sum, um, to keep track of how many ones we've encountered. So all we're going to do is we're just going to say one sum plus equal int of i. Because i, uh, we're looping through the, the binary element in the binary representation of this number. So we have to convert that to an int so that way we can actually sum it. So if we print out one sum, we get two, four, five, which we know uh, to be true from this example. We can also try 11, which should be three, and we have it like that. So that's good. We'll put this back to five. So assuming that you can't use Python's binary function, there's another way that you can solve this problem. So now that we've solved this with the aid of the bin function that Python provides us, let's actually go through and try to solve it without the use of that bin function. So perhaps, you know, the interviewer doesn't want you to use that function for whatever reason. So I'm going to write approach to without Python's bin function. So the idea here is going to make use of some bitwise operators. Specifically, the operators that we're going to be making use of are uh, AND as well as the shift operator. So we're going to be making use of these operators. And in order for me to show you how those operators will come into play, let me actually go through an example up here. And then once I illustrate the example, I think implementing it in code will be pretty straightforward. So let's just write out, uh, let's take an example. I just wrote out the binary representation of the number 11, as we uh, mentioned up here in the comments. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bit mask. So in this case, it's going to be uh, a bunch of zeros followed by a one. So the number of zeros is proportional to the length of the binary string minus one. And the last bit of that string is just the number one. So we have these two strings. And what we want to do is we want to perform 
bitwise operators on these elements of these strings. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the last element of this guy here and and it with this last component of the mask. So one and one is equal to one. And basically what's going to happen now is I'm going to get rid of this zero because one is going to come along for the ride. We're just going to mask this one with everything in the representation above it. And I'm going to shift this top binary string by one. So I'm going to get rid of the last um, binary string in that representation. So now we're here. We're going to do one and one again. So that is also one. Again, the one comes along for the ride. We shift the top string over by one. We have now zero and one, which is zero. So this gets removed. The one comes along for the ride. And here we have one and one. That's one. So we've gone through this process for uh, the string and we end up with the exact same binary representation of the number 11. So basically what we're going to do is that process while keeping a counter to keep track of the number of ones that we've encountered. So we can actually just keep a cumulative sum as we go through because anytime we add a zero it's not going to increase the sum. Anytime we add a one it will of course increase it by one. Let me show you what I mean and then if it's still not clear I'll go through another example and uh, hopefully that will solidify exactly what the approach is. So let me get rid of this here. And what I'm going to say is, again, declare a variable one sum, which will be the thing to keep track of the cumulative total in this case. And I'm going to say while num. And I'm going to essentially make these um, operations that I did in the example to the binary representation of the number. So I'm going to say one sum, this is where we keep the running tally, num and one. So this is the part where we, if I just go back up here and write down again the binary representation of 11 with the mask, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, take the last part of this, which corresponds to this one here, and end it with num. So that is what is going on here. So that, when I, after I get the outcome of that, I want to shift things over. So I want to say num shift equal one. So again, this guy comes along for the ride because this one stays the same and I'm getting rid or I'm shifting the bit for the binary representation of this number by one. And I basically just keep doing that. And at the end, if I print out one sum, All right, so printing out that, we had two and two. So that's the end of this example. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.